so let's see. It says, all right, 3x can't divide by 2x minus 1, minus 4x, times 3x plus 1, 3x plus 2, minus 9x squared, minus 4x plus 2. First thing we need to do is we need to multiply the terms on the outside. So the terms inside the bracket is 3x. Alright, so first we'll do the first step. 3x, so positive 3x, I'm going to do red the signs that aren't crossed. So technically this is a positive, and this is a positive, but you can see that from everything, right? So it is positive 3x times positive 2x, so it's taking away. So we have positive 6x, but we don't need to write the positive sign. Positive 3x times negative 1, all of the negatives will be there, so we get negative 3x. So it's actually 6x minus 3, but whatever sign is, that's the sign we write in front. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, next one, this is negative 4x times positive 3x. All the negatives will go away, so negative 1x. Does that make sense? Okay, negative 4x times positive 2. If you notice, this really says 6x minus 3x minus 12x minus 8x, but it still works fine. Now we have negative. Now technically there's a 1 here, okay? And we also see that this is going to be negative 1. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. I completely forgot about that. Because x by x, you got to be squared. 4x there, got to be squared. And this would be just x, okay? Negative 1 times negative x squared. That's going to be positive x squared. And negative 1 times positive 4, negative 4, negative 4x. Four Next, simply collect our like terms. Okay, so here's our squared. So I'm going to move them all together, okay? So this will be 6x squared. Now when I move this, what comes with it? You know, a negative sign. So it becomes subtract 12x squared plus x squared. And now other terms. Minus 3x, minus 8x, minus 4x. So now, I just combine my three terms and my other three terms. So I'm going to end up, because these are all likely, so I only have two different colors, I'm going to end up with only two terms in the end here. So 6 minus 12 is negative 6x squared plus 1. other terms. Really all I have to do, because my variables are the same, I just got to look at my coefficients and then adding and subtracting. Okay? So negative 3 minus 8 minus 4 negative 15 x. Okay, so that was my blue term. That was my red term. Does that make sense? Does that make sense how to put the signs in front of them? Yeah. Okay. Alright, question 3. Our triangle, and they've given us 3x plus 4 as assistance, and they've given us 4x minus 2 as our base. Okay. Do you know how to find the area of a triangle? Our height, here's our base. The area of this object is base times height divided by 2. So we know what our base is, that's our base. We know what our height is, that's our height. We just got to set this up. So I'm going to try to set that up. Okay, so the question gave you these dimensions for a rectangle. The height was 2x plus 1, the base was 3x plus minus 2. We needed the area of this rectangle. So we're going to put the area in black, okay? Area is equal to 6x squared minus x minus 2, right? So we'll put that. Okay. 
But what did they say in the question? What if they do what to the dimensions? Okay, so think of this as we're increasing the dimensions. Okay, so this is an extra one. And this is an extra one. Okay, so here's an extra one. So our new rectangle is going to have, it's going to look more like this. Here's roughly our new rectangle, right? With the old lines, of course, across here. Okay. So there's our new rectangle. What are we doing to those dimensions? We're doing what to them? We're, we're increasing them by one. Yeah, so we're increasing them by one. So I know we're doing what, okay? So I know the old measurement, the old measurement here, is this old measurement, right? But our new measurement is that amount, 3x minus 2, is what? Plus 1. So our new measurement is, I'm going to do it in red, okay? We'll say that's across here. That's 3x minus 2 plus 1. So what does that end up becoming with our new measurement? Well, can I simplify? Yeah, 3x minus 1. So that changes that a little. And what does this end up becoming? Our new plus 1. Hey, there you go. So we have 2x plus 1 plus 1. We get 2x plus 2. So now I have two new dimensions. What's our new area of the red triangle, let's say? So we have our area of our red triangle, 6x squared plus 4x minus 2. So I'm going to write that in. So it's, it's 6x squared plus 4x minus 2. What does the question ask at the very end? The last sentence. So we need to figure out how much the area total increased from here to here. So what would I do with those two equations to find out how much it increased? Yes, subtract. So I take those two equations to find the increase, okay? So increase in area is equal to So I did the exact same thing. I actually end up writing the old one first, right? If we're finding an increase, we need the larger area and subtract the smaller area, right? So technically, by looking at our shape, we knew the red triangle is a larger area, correct? So this is the larger amount. So I'm going to put that first, and then I'm going to subtract by technically the smaller area. So when I do that, I get 6x squared plus 4x minus 2 minus 6x squared plus x plus 2. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Our like terms we're going to put together. And let's see what we got. 6x minus 6x squared. Zero. Zero. So this cancels out. 4x plus x. All right. Put down those. And... Negative 2 plus 2. So what's the increase in area? 5x. The area increased 5x. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, number 5. Factoring. Whenever you do factoring, your first step is always to remove a greatest common factor. So always look for the GCF. Okay? From these terms, is there any common factor of 4 and 8? 4. Yeah? And what about an x squared and x? 
x. So I can actually remove 4x from this. When I divide each of these terms by 4x, right, I get what? Negative 4 mm. and negative 2x. Yes, yeah, so yeah, negative 2x plus uh, x plus negative 2. These are the exact same terms. So what would 5 divided by 5 be? Negative 1. 1. What's 4x divided by x? Or 4x divided by 4x? Yes. Negative 1. 1. It's just like any 1 divided by 1 is 1. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 4x divided by 4x is 1. That's it. Because you look at this, I can actually factor this any further. Okay, these are two different terms. There's nothing else to this. We don't have a trinomial, right? So that would be the factor term of this. Five b. Let's make this up. Three x squared minus six x plus nine. Okay. Now here we have a trinomial. But again, what's the first thing I look for? Well, population. Is there a common factor here? Uh, what? What? Three. Three. Let's take three out. When I take three out and I divide each term by three. What am I left with? Again, I got x squared and negative 3x plus 1. And then the a over there. Now, assuming the way your teacher has taught you this, if you look for numbers that multiply to this term and add to this, have you seen that before? Yes. Okay. So we'll just do a quick little recap here. These are usually written in the form of x squared. Usually write A, B, and C. Are you used to seeing it like that? So what we look for when we're factoring these types of things is we look for two terms that multiply to be C. Whoa, that was not a C. Way too much. The same two terms, okay, they need to add to B. Okay. They need to be the same terms. that idea in mind, here's our C, here's our B. Okay. Nothing else changes on the outside. So I need two numbers that multiply positive 3, and those same two numbers need to add to what? X squared. So let's look at two numbers. Can I do that? Look at these. I got no terms. Nothing works. So Guess what? Get rid of it. That's it. We try factoring the trinomial. You guys haven't, there is a way to do this, but they're going to teach you a formula later in the course, right? As of right now, you don't know. Well, that's it. That's as far as this one can go. Okay? 5c, same idea. 5m squared minus 10m minus 5. All right. Help me out. Is there a greatest common factor? So uh, still got the same idea here. Oh, what is this? Oh, I get it. Oh, I get that. Okay. Okay. And we still have number four. going to work for this? Nope. Are we done? Yep. We're done. This is the hardest one. Actually, it can be considered the easiest, but usually people have trouble seeing it. Okay. 3x to x minus 1 plus 5 to x minus 1. Okay. Again, what do you think? We're going to look for the greatest common factor. Is there a common factor in both of these? 
have is our common factor, 2x minus 1. So we're going to take that to the outside, 2x minus 1. And inside, what are we going to leave? Negative 2 and x minus 1. That's it. 2x plus 5 stays inside the brackets. 3x plus 5 equals 3. Easy? Blank, negative 8, right? So I think if I get the negative 8, so you used what were the numbers? Negative 4, 14, 2, negative 6, 2. First of all, negative 2. Ah. Oh, okay, so you want, instead you want the other way around? You want negative 2 and 6? This? Oh, negative 6 and. Yes! Negative times a negative gives us a positive, and negative 6 plus negative 2. So now in our factor, we get n minus 6 and n minus 2. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now let's see. Do I need negative 7? No. Yes, good. Now here, about, let's go to D then. D's a little trickier. 2a squared minus 2a minus 1 third. Okay. Oh, that would work. What's the first thing we should be looking for? Common factor. Who's the biggest common factor? C1? Now, what we're going to be looking for is our C so something times something equals negative 12. What's our B? Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Negative 1. Okay. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 12 but add to negative 1. There are some. Think two numbers that are close together. Yeah, there you go. So, negative 4 times positive 3 gives us negative 12. And negative 4 plus positive 3 gives us negative 1. So, equals, I still keep the 2 on the outside, a minus 4 and a plus 3. That 2 still stays on the Sense? Yeah? Okay. When we're factoring and there's a term in front of our x squared, or in this case, 8 squared, and the coefficient's greater than 1, and I can't find a greater common factor. I can't start my greatest common factor of 11 without negative 8. That was the answer as well. Okay. What you do is you find the factors of A. Okay? So we look for two factors of A, and the, or there could be pairs of them. And we look for the factors of C. Okay, it almost looks confusing to start, but we're gonna make sense of it. Then I'm gonna start multiplying them together, add them, and we're gonna add up to our B. So this is the style I want. I'm gonna set columns of all the factors of these numbers. Now I've only put two sets, but there could be more. Okay, so you're gonna see what I'm talking about. What are the factors of the number two? it. Those are the only factors. So those are the factors that are going to deal with the first term in our brackets, okay? These are going to deal with the first terms in our brackets. In other words, our brackets, okay, we're going to have our brackets. First terms will be something out of this, okay? So these will be our first terms. What are the factors of 12? equal signs, and the 
addition. And I know they got to add up to what number? Negative 11. Okay. I'm going to have the boxes around them so I know that these columns are together. They have to work in tandem. Okay. So I'm going to do negative 11. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do trial and error. Okay. I'm going to multiply 2 times 1 and 1 times 12. What's 2 times 1? And 1 times 12? Any combination of that make 11? No. So I'll put the 12. Now I go across. 2 times 12 and 1 times 1. Put in 11. Work. Any combination of that work? No. So that doesn't work. So I know this, these factors don't work. Okay? How about 2 by 2 and 1 by 6? Which does 4 and 1 by 6. Does that work? Six, one by two, has eleven. Does one by two those work? Multiply both. This set's not working. I know it's gonna be this set now. Let's try to figure out how. So it's two times three and one times four. So we're just gonna put in are those gonna work? No. Last chance. Hopefully this works. Two by four, one by three. What is that? Three and one, three. Hey, is that gonna work? No? Yeah, okay. We know a combination of those will work, okay? So here's the important thing. We know we multiplied the 2 by the 4. This is very important, this part. And 1 by the 3, okay? So we know that 1 by 3 is going to be 3. 2 by 4 is 8. They both need to be negative in order for this to work when I add them, right? So that has to be negative and that has to be negative. So that means these last terms, they both have to be negative, okay? So my first terms, one's going to be 2x. One's going to be 1x. My second terms, that's what we're referring to these numbers we just multiplied by. One is going to be negative 3, and one's going to be negative 4. Does that make sense so far? Here's the trick. The 2 and the 4 can't go in the same bracket because we multiplied them by each other. So the 2x is in this bracket, which means the negative 4 has to be the second term in the other bracket. Okay. So that means where's the negative 3 go? See that works too because I multiplied one by three, so the one and the three have to go in opposite brackets. And that's it, we factored it. Okay? It's a bit confusing. Well, that's why I understand. You understand that one? Okay, I'm going to print this all out. 